they had no, no uh, curiosity about how old was the universe, how did various things come to be. In fact, the stylistic um, view of the Genesis accounts of the creation of the world and everything in it, the style shows very clearly that they were trying to establish a kind of uh, poetic structure to say that God was the source of all things. And that's why they, he did it in six days. And that's why if you interpret it scientifically, you get all screwed up. Yes. Because light came on the first day, but the sun and the moon yeah. on the fourth day. Yeah. Well, the reason light had to come on the first day is because you had to have a day structure. And that's why at the end of each day of creation, and there was night and there was day. That's a poetic expression that God, this was a structured kind of thing. Each thing in the universe had a very special, uh, God had a very special affection for it. In other words, it's, it's a literary style in order to teach something that is true but is not scientific. So that's why I get upset. But if the book of Genesis was written by fallible humans who didn't really know anything, in what sense is it God speaking to us? That's a very, that's a very good question. We, we really truly believe that God, um, working through these various cultures, that these writers were inspired to um, give the foundations for a religious tradition. What that inspiration means, what it doesn't mean, is God was not dictating to these people. That's clearly absurd to think that. But they were people of faith in a deep religious tradition, and that God was really working with them, okay, through their faith in creating a literature that would be um, foundational for future religious belief. I mean, to go into it in more detail, I'm afraid I studied it about uh, 45 years or 50 years ago, so I could not recreate Let, Let's switch to I, another, to yeah, another topic. Sure. Um, the, the statement by Pope John Paul II in 1996, could you tell me a bit more about that? Well, that statement truly came at a very epochal time. It was a statement made, as best I recall it, the message was given to the Pontifical Academy of Sciences on the occasion of a very significant meeting on what it was called as origins. And there were people from, from the America, from NASA, there were eminent scientists there discussing evolutionary theory, uh, expansion of the universe, etc. It was a scientific gathering, and the Pope addressed them. So you have to see the background as being very significant. These, this was an eminent group of international scientists gathered to discuss these very important scientific questions. On that occasion, the Pope wished to make it clear that after all this period of time, and especially the transition from Pope uh, Pius XII, who had said in Humani Generis, and I'm not quoting exactly, but that uh, evolution is one of several possibilities for explaining. Whether he was right or wrong in saying that, I'm not judging, but he said it back maybe uh, two or three decades before 1996 when we knew less, but we knew quite, quite a bit about evolution even in that time. At any rate, John Paul II wished to update us frankly, to put it in a very uh, succinct way. He wanted to update the church's view of what scientists had accomplished. And he made it clear, very clear because he cited several of the scientific disciplines. He said the point is there's a, there's a convergence here to this best scientific explanation, the theory of evolution. There's a convergence among many very significant disciplines, geology, paleontology, molecular biology, cosmology, astrophysics, that they all converge with many differences because we're still, as all of us will admit, you know, our pilgrimage is one of people that are ignorant and hopefully growing less ignorant as we learn more, but that the best scientific explanation from all of these disciplines together was evolution. And I think it was a very significant statement. Yeah, me too. It came too late. I mean, I'll be honest with you, Richard, my reaction 
as a believing Catholic and scientist was, so what? Yeah. We've known this for 50 years, yes. that this is the best scientific explanation. Yes. I really honestly agree with that. Yes. So what? Because many times the church, for, for, for very good reasons, I'm not faulting the church, mind you, but for very good reasons, it trails behind <laughs> in making a declaration like this. It yes. trails behind by too long a period of time in absorbing scientific culture and then judging it and speaking out on it, you know? Some might say that to call it the best scientific explanation is too restrictive, that, that it, what he was in effect saying is that the scientific explanation is the best explanation. Yes, I think that's correct. Is the best explanation, but from within a scientific methodology, because he immediately goes on to talk about the philosophical and theological yes. implications and all of this. And we, and we talked which about that. Uh, many of us will diverge on when you get to that stage. Yes. yes. What do you but, think is the appeal of the idea of intelligent design or creationism? Well, it follows upon this very last point that we're making the distinction between a scientific methodology and the philosophical, theological implications, which you cannot deny that we human beings are kind of driven either to deny or to assert that there are philosophical and theological implications from our scientific results. What intelligent design, and I speak from a very American point of view, because I think at least in its origins, um, it's a very kind of American uh, phenomenon in fact, I call it the intelligent design movement. And what it is, it's a mistaken attempt to try and use science to establish the, um, what I call the implications of science, that is going beyond science to the philosophical theological interpretation. So what intelligent design does? It begins with biology. And I'm not a biologist, so you correct me, but they offer various possibilities, you know, blood clotting system in the human being um, and various well, things. Well, they're effectively looking as, for gaps that in, in, in present scientific correct. understanding, yeah. they from say a scientific that there point of view, are irreducibly plucked. complex biological systems, and you can explain that better than I can, that cannot be explained within the scientific method and require an intelligent designer. And in every case that they have suggested, and Ken Miller has, as you know, analyzed each of these cases, and you have, I'm sure, too, but Ken Miller within the Catholic tradition, as a biologist, simply says, none of it holds up. We can explain it if you carefully examine what evolution does. You can explain this. Evolution is creative. It uses an organism, you know, that pre-existed the current irreducibly complex organism, as they call it. It takes this organism which had a, a one function before and it integrates it into another function. Evolution is very creative that way. Well, the fault of intelligent design, the fundamental fault, is that it steps outside scientific methodology and will not acknowledge it's doing it. It's a religious movement. It clearly is intrinsically judged, and in the judicial system in the United States, whenever it's come before a court, it's been judged such, and therefore cannot be taught in the public school system in the United States because it's a religious movement. The other, um, I'd like to say, I think, absurdity of intelligent design is in its attempt to bring God into the picture it creates, and I really mean creates a God. It's not the God I believe in. It's a God who's a designer. I mean, you know, I've been to, you know, the uh, Milan in Italy, one of the great capitals of designing, you know, fashion clothes and all. Uh, we design cars, we design everything. The God I believe in is not that kind of designer, uh, an engineer or someone that has to be continually, you know, sort of touching up the universe because it's not running the way he wanted it to run, he or she. I think it not only it does it not admit that it's stepping outside of science, when it steps into religion, it's really, uh, it's an absurd religious mm -hmm. 